If you've ever been denied a fishing trip with boys by your significant other, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button and tell me in the comments how that day turned out. Because today we're going to talk about why Asian people are such good fishermen. Why they're the best fishermen for that matter. So I'm going to go through my top five. Feel free to chime in if I've missed something or if you believe something deserves an honorable mention in the comments let me know let's set this thing on fire asian people are the best fishermen because fill in the blanks in the comments all right so i'll give you my top five and i want to see your top five So number five as to why Asian people are such good fishermen is because they travel in packs. The little group of piranhas here, you know. You don't want to mess with them because you know how shit goes. They fish, they take their family with them. So instead of one crappy, one person's crappy limit of say 25, we've now got mom, dad, uh, son, son son sister you know now we got a limit of 60 possible crappies in the cooler okay so when we go fishing we go deep we roll deep and we pack them out by the pounds by the tens of pounds okay we're talking white bass coolers 200 pounds heavy pretty normal day for the asian person to go fishing all right so that's number five my number four is gonna be there's this thing that has been floating around with me ever since I was a little kid, and it goes something like this. We're not going home unless we catch something, okay? So let me know if that is true with you guys as well because I run through this quite often when I was a little kid. Uh, uncles would say it to me. Grandpas would say it to me. We're not going home when we catch something, right? So this is specifically true when we were fishing for trout <laughs> uh so everybody knows trout bite the bite window for trout right is typically prime time in the morning and prime time at night so if you didn't catch something in the morning guess how long you're staying that day you're staying until dark right so there you go there's your 14 hour shift right there and you're a little kid you're hungry we don't we don't have mcdonald's to go back and eat anything you're, you're literally just staying out there for 14 hours builds the grit in every single fisherman okay so that 14 hour shift dubbed we ain't going home unless we catch something that's super true happened to me i'm sure that's happened to a lot of other guys too and that's number four that's number four uh we ain't going home until we catch some so yeah yeah pretty freaking crazy right number three is we eat everything okay so when you catch a fish for the longest time for maybe for the first 20 years of my fishing life, I never knew what a fillet was. I didn't know what it was because we never filleted a fish. It was always gut it, pull the guts out, pull the gills out, trim the uh, the fins off, right? Well, then we'd start doing that later too, but trim the fins off, cut the fish in half, and boil it. That was the only way to, to eat it. Well, we deep fry and grill too, but that was the only way to properly eat fish. We eat eyeballs, we eat brains, we eat... Uh, shoot, everything. Everything. Let me know if you guys are like this too or if I'm just an oddball, okay? Because I know me and the family guys, not family guys, but me and my family, that's how we ate fish. We still do it that way. Reference all of our catch and cook videos. That's exactly how we eat them. And it's good. You know, it's like uh, the fillets, when you do fillets and you boil them, the fillets don't taste the same. The broth doesn't taste the same because... A lot of times you're missing, uh, you're missing the bone, the bone marrow, or whatever it does. It makes the broth taste better. So, if you're flying it, you better be grilling it. You better not be, uh, you know, making a soup or broth out of it. You need the bones. The bones make it taste better. This is especially true to other dishes. Uh, pho, for example, you want knuckle bones. It makes it taste better. Don't let, you don't believe me? Go look it up on YouTube. It's true. Anyways, yeah, getting a little off track there. Number two is we spend way too much money on gear. 
So typically how it starts is the whole the whole group will just buy cheap stuff, the cheapest you can find, right? You're talking like Omniflex fishing line, ugly stuff. Ugly stuff is pretty expensive. Uh, the, the grade down from an ugly stick, and we'd always buy the stick with a reel on already for 30 bucks. It's a pretty good combo, you know, for crappy fishing, bluegill fishing, things like that. But in the past 10 years or so, eh, maybe you'd say 15 years or so, I've been seeing some crazy setups, okay? I've been, okay, I'm, I'm on, I'm on these forums and these Facebook groups. I don't always comment, but, you know, I, I skim through them, and I started noticing, like, people on the bank, they buy expensive rods, expensive reels, expensive line, and they're throwing expansive lures. To give you an example, right? There might be a person who is fairly new to the fishing world, say it's their second year in, Reference that to me. Um, this is my 25th year in, right? So this is his second year in, and he's already talking G Loomis NRXs, Shimano Metaniums, Daiwa Steezes, uh, Sunline Shooter or CR Tatsu line. They're talking Mega Bass lures. They're talking Glide baits. Okay, this is the upper tier of the fishing equipment world. Whatever happened to the middle tier? I don't know. They just they just came in with ugly sticks. They hopped directly to NRXs. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Asian people do this. So uh, I don't know how the other ethnicities handle this, but Asian people, we're weird like that, okay? It's one of those weird things. If one guy buys an NRX, it just peer pressures everybody into buying it. I've seen this happen firsthand, even in the group. Uh, uh, I bought... I've bought some expensive reels, but not a lot of people have made that jump. So I bought a, uh, well, actually, I will have to say it's back to 47. He bought a Sotega, a Daiwa Sotega saltwater reel. He paid like 700 bucks for it. And then I bought that reel, which is the uh, Shimano Aerotechnium. I think I paid like 650 bucks for it. But ever since we did those two, people have been buying and investing, you can say, into expensive equipment because people are literally uh i don't know if it's i don't know if it's peer pressure or not because i'm not pressuring people into buying i'm actually kind of talking them i'm talking them out of it but when they start seeing you cast in these videos they start seeing you especially if it's damn so we're making 100 150 yard casts and they start looking at their equipment they want to upgrade as well because they can see the performance difference so what i'm saying is People are willing to do a lot for 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 a fish, for a little fish, you know, little fish like this, or, or in this case, little fish with stripers, you know, stripers like stripers like that. But Asian people, are pretty dedicated, man. They are pretty dedicated. They will spend monies for the tackle, okay. And that's not even the worst one. The worst one. The number one reason why I think Asian people are so good at fishing is they dedicate so much time to it. Um, personally, me, I spend about four to five hours a week on it. And that's because I don't even fish as much as I used to. I used to pour about, I would say on average, 20 hours a week. Eh, don't tell anybody. Yeah, 20 hours a week. When I was when I first jumped into the bass fishing world, when I kind of got tired of the striper world, I jumped into the bass world. If you if you consider time on the water and research on the internet, I burned about 20 hours. Not even exaggerating, about 20 hours a week researching tackle, researching what works, researching lakes, researching what bass do, researching basically if they hit top water or not. Because that's all I threw when I was fishing with stripers. But we, I've invested a lot of time in the first year, year and a half, you know, everything. Uh, my mind was so wrapped around it. Uh, we basically, between me and Hybrid Killer, uh, we spent a lot of time studying tournaments, studying seasonal patterns. And that's how I think if you if you guys really follow us in real life, feel follow the channel, we kind of went, we, we never tournament fished before five years ago. And we went from literally skunking out every tournament to catching a limit every tournament to, you know, now we're at the mode where I don't want to catch a limit. I'm looking to win. So I'm willing to take these calculated risks to win. So 
that being said, we spend a lot of time. Uh, from the tournament angles, that's one angle. But from the other angles is most people are willing to travel very far and lose a lot of sleep to catch fish. And that's something that I don't see outside the Asian world. Uh, a lot, not a lot of people are willing to lose a lot of sleep to catch fish. And some people actually release fish. A lot of Asian people, you don't catch to release. It's a, it's a very strong catch and eat community. And people are willing to travel out of state. So I'll give you an example. People in Minnesota, we have cousins and relatives that do this. Twin Cities, Minnesota, Wisconsin, driving six to eight hours to was Devil's Lake. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I know you guys. I know a couple of you guys up there are watching my videos. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought it was a six-hour trip. And then some other guys were coming down to like Idaho and a couple other states, like in Kansas, trying to catch hybrids and, you know, white bass. That's some dedication. So they'll, they'll, they'll drive out Friday night, fish Saturday, fish Sunday morning, and just drive right back. They'll sleep in their cars, things like that, sleep in the parking lots, catch unlimited white bass so they'll bring in like these big old coolers catch up and bring it back it's perfectly legal no problem with that but just the sheer idea if you're gonna go that far to catch just white bass thumbs up for you guys thumbs up you guys are troopers man so that's my number one and um let me know what you guys think of those i know it's a uh, a little bit of a quick video, but I just wanted to get that off my chest because I've been I've been thinking about that for a while, and then uh, I've been thinking about like other ethnicities compared to our ethnicity and why we are so dedicated to the to to this fishing thing. All right, so um, that's all I got for today. That's my top five. I know I missed a couple of things, so let me know in the comments what I missed. And if you're somebody who's not Asian, you're looking in. Let me know what your opinions are also. If you if you feel like your ethnicity is better than the Asian people, let me know also. Once again, this is Connery from Out of Work. See you guys on the next one. Bye.